finish this week. Okay, you can see the slides, right? I guess so. See the slides, right? Okay, nobody says no. I guess you are seeing the slides. Can you hear me? I guess you can hear uh, me. Yes. Okay. So what we were saying was, we just made a couple of definitions about what is a sequence, what is a sequence, and we said that images were not sequences because we have been uh, processing images with CNNs. They cannot be sequences because uh, CNNs were not for sequence modeling. That was what we said. Well, actually, we lied. I mean, there was a reason for us to lie because uh, there will be some concepts about defining sequence problems. We are not yet it, but we are going to <laughs> define it and we are going to discuss them. I'm going to make a brief introduction just to give you a taste right out of it, sorry. So, uh, the definition is, is an image a sequence? The thing is, guys, let's try to remember how CNNs processed images. A CNN was a small filter, right? What you did was, you went that filter over this. Let me annotate, sorry, just, sorry. Just make that out, let me get over it. Sorry. I can, yes. So, it was like you had a CNN here, some filters. It was spanning the image. Is this how you view an image, guys? When you look somewhere, trying to understand it, do you start from the first pixel? Just go and go on. When you're finished, get to the next one. You just, you don't. That's not how you do it. And you're humans, and we have proved that you are not CNNs, you are RNNs. And actually, there's a way you are dealing with that information. Okay, we've just, we are not, we didn't totally lie to you because in the first weeks of CNN, we said that some part of our brain, the uh, visual cortex, is very similar to CNN. And that's true, neuroscientists find, found that out. But the output of that visual cortex, the output of that CNN, is being fed to an RNN. We also proved this in the previous slides. So how, come, how, how does it work? Actually, when it comes to optimizing views and doing things, we are fantastic guys. And what we call it attention. The name of it is attention, guys. Uh, actually, attention idea is taking its uh, roots from uh, cognitive psychology. In cognitive psychology, they have made experiments and they have tried to understand how humans see. Just like I said, you didn't see, you just look, look and try to understand a visual information, not in that scanning sense, right? You don't scan the image. You do something else. You do some eye movements. And they called it visual attention. Actually, how you see is, first you get a very rough definition of the image, and you collect some abstract features. Sound familiar? That's what your visual, visual cortex does. Then, using those uh, points of rough, very coarse, not high resolution abstract features, using your positions, you do things. For example, maybe your eye first hit the shoes. You immediately think of shoe. That's a shoe. What do you think when you see a shoe? Imagine I just showed you a shoe. You would definitely think that that's a shoe that belongs to a human. And if I'm not standing downwards, I'm not, most probably I'm human and I'm just standing right. If I just look a bit upwards, I should be able to see a guy because if that's a shoe worn by a person, there should be head there. So you make this jump. Then you just make this jump. And maybe you just make another jump. Actually, that's how you do. That's how your eyes make a movement. And actually, how your eyes make a movement is out of a very optimized architecture of your brain understanding the world. And that is also a sequence. So if we could create sequences of this view, we could make it, things out of it. Actually, handwritten text, when you're writing a text, how you write it uh, classifies that text better than how the text look like. So actually, we can define visual information as some sequential information as well. And we are going to do this. We are going to feed images 
to CNNs, then just like the human eye does, we are going to get information out of it and we are going to create this concept of sequential jumps and we will call it attention. And just like visual attention our brain does, we are going to observe that phenomenon in recurrent neural networks and we are going to call the concept of attention. And the concept of attention is not limited to only visual signals, guys. Concept of attention also applies to natural language. For example, let me just construct your sentence to you. Hello, my name is Erdem. Where is the attention in this text? I think it's Erdem. Because that's the most important information I've provided to you. And we will be able to observe that attention definition in natural language, in text as well. So we are going to create CNN, RT, RNN, CNN plus RNN models. We are going to use natural language models. And we are going to observe this idea of att attention. And when we get the idea of attention for a problem, we'll be defining that problem as a sequence problem, guys. Okay, so that was just to taste it, just a brief introduction. But if you have any questions about what attention is, because it's a confusing uh, concept, that's the first time most probably most of you have heard it, please ask. Okay, this will be covered. This will be covered. Okay, before I finish, I'm going to uh, cut short today, first day, so I'm not going to bore you or bother you much. I'm going to make some simple definitions of problems. In the next week, we are going to properly start things. This is an RNN, this is the hidden state, that's the mathematical review, that's the vector, that's the formula, that's the activation function. We are going to do it, but not this week. I'm going to just make some definitions of problems as well, so that you may spend this week thinking about your project, nothing else, just dreaming and fantasizing about how your project in this course will be successful and how many citations will you get with the paper you have published as an output of this uh, project in this course, okay? So sequence prediction consists of predicting the next sequence. Sequence prediction, we start by this. So given an input, I want to just guess a sequence. A sequence of words or characters in a text. A sequence of products bought by a customer. So I'm trying to guess the next element. That's the basic definition you can. That's a problem. It could be a sequence of events observed on logs, a sequence of frames in a video clip. So it is like you are trying to make an anomaly detection system. Some uh, data comes. Some data comes. <laughs> this is important. Okay, a lot. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Get to understand. Çok teşekkür ederim. Hadi sen hadi Allah yukarı. Hadi. Okay. So, I'm sorry. What you were saying? Ha, okay. It's like an anomaly detection problem. So, Really sorry. I'm really, really, really sorry. Really sorry. Okay, so what we were saying, I was trying to make different examples of sequence prediction problems. For example, you are given an anomaly detection problem and you are trying to detect an anomaly on a system. An anomaly is uh, actually something wrong going on on a sequence of events. So things come, your new information comes, and you are trying to uh, guess the next one because you want to detect an anomaly. So you can detect that anomaly by guessing the next sequence, or you could define it dif uh, differently as well. What I'm trying to say is, sequence prediction is simply trying to get the next one. So a nice example is actually, this is being done in Amazon. The sequence of products bought by a customer. So if you keep buying new things, that, that N11, for example, in Turkey or Amazon, provides you new stuff. And they're all using RNNs now. I mean, now for the next three or four years, even Google. So another good example is when you type something in Google, 
the next words comes out, right? That's also a sequence next element uh, prediction problem. They are all RNNs, guys. They are all LSTMs. LSTMs is ruling the industry now for the last two or three years. So that's one of the uh, most fundamental problems RNNs solve today. You can design your problem. So let me get to the next slide. So it is predicting the next value. It could be predicting the next class label. It could be predicting the next sequence. Okay, we could think of a problem like that. So uh, it is like what number comes next problem. You, you've seen this in Facebook a lot of it doesn't really they don't make sense, but being able to guess the next element of a sequence is an important question for many problems. Okay. So um, sequence prediction model, you are, feed, you are feeding that you, you can feed multiple sequences or a single sequence. If they are related, you can. It could be a, a guessing the next element of the sequence problem for single vector or multiple vectors. Doesn't matter. It is still a sequence prediction problem. Okay, so uh, Google's, sorry, Google's autocompletion, as I just said, maybe the best real world example because we just live it every day. Uh, and uh, actually, these are all, how can I put it, individualized. This is something I got. So Star Wars sequel trilogy is bad was the first thing that I got. Try it. It won't be the same for you because a different LSTM model is trained for you guys. The, you have provided the sequence input all your lives to Google and they just trained, they are, they are training every day a new LSTM for you and the LSTM is working for you guys. Okay? And needless to say, there are countless real world examples. Okay, uh, so let's continue. Another example could be the class label. I'm feeding a question. And I'm trying to detect something. For example, the example I've uh, given animal detection. A sequence is coming. I don't say it's a problem. But at some point, I say, hey, there's something wrong with it. And that something being wrong could be related to some very previous element of the sequence as well. Because of the long and short term dependencies between the elements in the sequence. Wow. I've made an important definition, which I'm going to be using the whole course. Long-term, short-term dependencies, correlations between the elements of a sequence. So good. So I can train a sequence with some training data. And then an unseen sequence comes. I can just make a prediction out of it by making classification. Many problems. For example, there are nice examples, working examples in industry, is tax categorization. One of the nicest examples also is uh, people are making a lot of comments on the internet. They don't necessarily say that their comment is negative or positive, but they are making comments. And for example, the guy writes, this movie is bad, I don't like it at all, it's terrible. Well, you know that it's a bad comment, but because you're a human being. So imagine we have a system, we can make a classification out of these comments and we could just uh, uh, objectively say, well, 95% of the comments were bad. Uh, that's, that's something you should do. If you're a big company and if there are zillions of comments, well, you need to have a uh, system like this. And since the Amazon is one of the biggest companies with user information, Amazon is the, one of the biggest companies that have the biggest teams for machine learning or Facebook or Google or topic categorization. There are news and they are you're categorizing as news or stuff. Actually, one of you is Ali here. No, Ali is going to watch the uh, lesson on YouTube. Uh, the previous semester, he has done an RNN project. This was a classification project. He did what he did was given a text. Is the news text or not? Or you can do this example and given a news article, is it about sports? It's classified. RNNs can do it because they are sequence. Okay. And I just said animal detection is also a sequence prediction problem. Because in the cases we have incoming data, anomaly is important. Imagine you have a factory and 
that's an intelligent factory, industry version 4. And there are a lot of sensors, all part of the factory. And you know that when something breaks, the next thing will break and correlated to it, something happens or parallel to it, if something happens, there's, a, there's something going on. And you need to model it. That's a sequence of events that will make the factory fail, right? You can create a sequence model to give you an early alarm system for that factory that will need to have an RNN test, okay? Okay. Uh, or uh, these genomic research, actually this is something also being done. We thought we, as human beings, we don't totally understand how genes are uh, modeled. And we don't know when uh, we have genes, we can observe the DNAs, and we don't necessarily know what part of that DNA is a specific chromosome, because there are mutations, there are different versions of chromosomes, when a chromosome ends, when the other one starts, or is there a strange chromosome there I have to classify related to, I don't know, cancer maybe? Or is some chromosome related to a cancer? Is there a sequence of data in our genes? You can create RNNs out of it. And these are just very important nature papers that take uh, thousands of thousands of citations or get the Nobel Prize. So it's generic research. It's highly related to RNNs, very, very recent research goes. Okay, class labels. Or health informatics. Well, we just said that two different patients' information is not related, but my single information taken in different times could be modeled as a sequence problem. And an RNN or an LSTM can model it. Imagine I have some problem with my heart rate that just shows itself once in a while. So they put a device on me, maybe my watch, my smartwatch. And it's an LSTM on it, it processes. And after some times it says, that could be a problem with you because it has been modeled with so many information taken from patients. A CNN will be able to do it because it will need some fixed length data. And maybe that anomaly, which is creating the problem, was a small part of the sequence, but actually defining that sequence. When I modeled the problem as a sequence, I've got my answer, okay, health informatics. As you can see, uh, I'm making all problems, all important problems of the world, and I'm relating them to RNAs. Actually, that's the case. So related to Prat's question, actually all advanced problems of AI are actually sequence problems. That's why we need RNAs, because CNNs fail to do it artificial neural networks or other memoryless systems like, I don't know, support vector machines. Support vector machines favorite because they cannot abstract features as well as CNNs do, but CNNs also fail because they don't have memory. Or you could be sequence to sequence. Given a sequence, you'll need a sequence. It's like you're giving some numbers, you're getting some numbers mathematically. But practically, what is it? Let's give some examples. Language translation, the best example and which is a part of our daily lives. You all remember that day, guys. One day, everybody was talking about Google Translate. It was like, hey, Google some, did something magical, Translate is working, fantastic. Because they have provided their first LSTM-based model, guys. That's the, that simple it is. They are working on it, and they are working on a transformer-based model because they have provided that. But that was the first time they had perfected their LSTM-based model, and they have just provided it. And one day, like a couple of years ago, like some years ago, five or four, I don't remember, three years ago maybe, it was working fantastic because they were able to implement an LSTM-based model. LSTM is a type of RNA, which we'll be dealing with. So he'll have to eat, a leap to essen. as simple as that. It's a very difficult natural language translation or language translation is a very difficult subject. That's why we are doing it on the second part of the course. Okay. So projects, uh, before we finish, guys, I do mean it when I say it's a good idea to start thinking about it. Because what I recommend you is to get your idea of project by six, week six. So by week six, here a total idea of what, I, what you're going to do, I mean. That's nine. So maybe you start looking for some data sets and some ideas. I'm going to provide data sets starting from next week. 
because they are data sets websites. You start working on your ideas. And if you have a thesis, come up with that idea. So starting with next week, I'm going to do something. This is familiar. At the beginning of the lesson, I'm going to ask, hey, anybody thought of any idea of your project? And for example, Murat, you are here. You sent me an email, right? You can think of your email with the information you got this week. Make some Googling and come up with an idea and say, I'm going to make it like a problem like this. Maybe some of your friends will say, why don't you do it like that? So at the start of uh, each lecture, we are going to have a, a short brainstorming of your projects if you want to. Okay. And I've got some suggested reading to start, guys. Uh, sequence prediction problems, sequence models by Andrew and G lessons, introduction sequence modeling problems, and the taking card uh, application of it. To explain. Uh, I will provide a lot of suggested readings, guys, every week. I definitely recommend you take a look at them. Okay, this is this was week one introduction, and I think we are done. Any questions? Okay, then.